Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, it's finally here. I am going to be doing my rankings of my Natasha Denona palettes that I currently have in my collection. So if you want to see what comes out on top, just keep watching. We have 27 palettes to talk about today. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. One of my specialties, if you didn't know, was Natasha Denona. So I do have quite a large Natasha Denona collection. So we're gonna get to ranking them. I was trying to get this video done in 2020 because I wanna do these annually every December. I just missed out. So this is my 2021 rankings of Natasha Denona. I'm gonna have two, one this month and one at the end of December. But anyways, let's just get into it. So we're gonna start off with number 27. Now I do kind of wanna say, obviously the little guys are going to be at the bottom. They just can't beat out the big palettes. So even though the bottom half is very heavily run by the little palettes, I don't want to discourage you from purchasing them because they are great but you just can't beat the big palettes. It's not the same, but the mini ones are a great way to get a taste of the formula and some of the color combos are absolutely stunning. Now, if you are gonna get the mini ones, I don't recommend this mini one though. So coming in at number 27, we have the mini sunset palette. This one was one of her first ones that came out and she totally, totally tried to trick us with this formula and give us something that was not the regular Natasha Denona formula. The shimmers aren't the amazing shiny deliciousness in this palette that they normally are in her big palettes and the match just don't blend as well. So this one is coming in at 27 because not as into the warm color story and the quality is bad. Number 26 we have the mini Lila palette. So this one I like the color story of more. I love purple eyeshadows as you can see but the quality on this also was kind of a fail. Yeah I can't remember exactly which shadows I didn't like. I know I didn't like this one from what I can remember but overall I just remember thinking that these colors weren't so great and I haven't used this in a very 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 long time for that reason. So it also is ranked quite low because I don't use it. I don't feel the need to use it. Coming in at number 25, we have the Cranberry palette. Now this is not a mini palette, but it is five full-size eyeshadows and she has since reformulated this palette, I believe. So don't go by my ranking right now because actually recently one of you guys commented about how it's so much better now. So the old formulation of the Cranberry palette just was not it. These mattes are so sheer. You can see I've tried really hard to dig into this palette. The shimmers are really beautiful on this but the mattes were so disappointing and I just think it's unacceptable to have three out of five shadows that perform good so for this one it was a quality reason but the colors are really pretty but again she's reformulated. Number 24, we have the Zendo palette. I was not crazy about this color combination. I don't know. I feel like the colors weren't cohesive enough for me. I never really fell in love with the look with this palette. This shade right here has no pigmentation to it as well. The rest of the colors work great, and I think a lot of people really do enjoy this one, but for me, I don't know. I didn't like the colors. I don't like pairing them together. You can get pretty looks with it, but I don't really feel the need to use all five colors together because I don't like the way the look turns out. Number 23, we have the Oral Palette. This is a beautiful palette. I don't know, I just haven't reached for it. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's just Natasha Denona has so many beautiful color stories that this one doesn't come out on top for me, but it's nice, but I haven't really reached for it except for like once or twice, honestly. I actually am gonna leave this out on my desk so I can use it some more, but it didn't call out to me in the most recent years. Number 22, we have the Sunset palette. So this is one of Natasha Denona's first and just quite honestly, it's an outdated palette. This was hot, hot, hot when warm tones were first starting to come into style and be trendy. And if you follow me, you know I'm not a huge fan of warm palettes and this palette is a little bit too warm for me. I'll wear warm colors, but I have not felt tempted to reach for this palette at all. Honestly, I look at this and the color story doesn't even inspire me. The quality is great. Don't get 
get me wrong. Just don't really care for the color story anymore. Number 21, we have the mini nude palette. Now at this point, I have to say, every single one of these palettes I really, really like. This is when it starts to get tough because Natasha Denona, I have so many of her palettes because they are so great. So this is the point where I'm like ranking my babies. So it's really hard. The mini nude is a beautiful little guy. If you love these colors, I highly recommend it. The quality in here is really good. She just has better mini color stories that I prefer, but this one is absolutely beautiful. And there's something really special about these shimmers as well. This is a true representation of her amazing formula. So if you like these colors, highly recommend. Next up, we have the Sunrise palette. So this one was the first, I believe, of its kind as far as the weight, the amount of colors that you get. It is a beautiful palette. I really like this one. It's just not my favorite. I don't know. I just haven't reached for it that much. I look at the color story. I really enjoy it. I think it's great for the summer, but for some reason, I just grab for the other color stories more. So this one is just number of use as the reason why it lands where it lands, but it is a beautiful palette. Ugh, I asked Jose to bring me home a pistachio latte from Starbucks. I don't recommend it. Ugh. Coming in at number 19, we have the mini star palette. Now here is what I'm talking about with a really beautiful color story that I love. <sighs> Okay, you guys, I, I love everything that I'm speaking about from here on out. I don't know why it ranked so low. There's just so many good palettes because it, this is beautiful. If you're looking for something that has more of a unique color story, but it's still quite toned down, I really recommend this one. I don't have a rhyme or reason why I placed this where I did. It's just where it fell, but it's really beautiful. Number two. In number 18 we have the regular star palette and I think the reason why I don't reach for this is because of the layout I don't like these two separate squares it doesn't visually appeal to me which I know is really dumb <laughs> but it's just for that reason I don't grab for it it's in my brain I know and I don't think too hard about it it's just I don't grab for it the layout just does not appeal to me but the colors in here are absolutely stunning if you like grungy eyes this half is going to be beautiful. You have lighter mauve eyes here for this side. It's a gorgeous palette. It's absolutely stunning. I just don't reach for it because subconsciously I don't like how it's laid out. I wish there was just an extra row of shadows or something to fill in there. I probably would reach for it more. Number 17, we have the mini retro palette. This one is a great color story. The only downside to it is I wish this color was more green. It pulls pretty gray on me. The undertone that you have in your skin kind of dictates the way that this is gonna look. I wanted it to look more green on me. I got gray. Regardless, it is a stunning palette. It's a really unique color story and I would love to see her come out with a big palette that is kind of inspired by this palette. How cool would a retro palette be from Natasha? I'm just saying. Number 16, I have the Camel palette. So again, this is one of her full size five pan palettes. This is a beautiful color story. If you wear your neutral tones, I think you will really enjoy this one. It's not one that I grab for a lot because it's just a plain old camel nude palette, but if you're looking for these tones in a travel friendly palette, that is the Natasha Denona formula. This is gorgeous. Coming in at number 15, we have the Tropic palette. This palette isn't available anymore, but it is available in a mini size if you are interested in this bottom row over here. I do not own the mini one, but I'm on the unpopular side here, and I really like this palette. This palette definitely got a lot of mixed reviews, but I do have to say I've used this quite a lot. It's actually one of my most used palettes. Now, I can't rank it at the top top because, to be honest, it's not the best formula. This bottom bottom row here, you do have to work with it. I will say I'm pretty good at working with formulas that don't work well. I just love the color story so much that I still wear it. The top two rows here, fabulous, beautiful palette. But this is one that I would bring on vacation with me because you had some fun colors for events and things that you're doing, but you also had your everyday tones. I really like this palette. I didn't love it at first because they did have those quality issues. But as far as what I grabbed for, I always reach for this because I love the color story here. Coming in at number 14, we have the Lila palette. Now you guys, I feel uneasy about this being ranked where it is because if I'm being completely honest with you, I have not reached for this palette. The color story has not interested me 
but I put it out for this video. I swatched it. I put it on my eyes, and I think by the end of this year when I rank these again, I think this one definitely is going to move up in the ranks because I really am enjoying this palette now. This year, I kind of transformed more into loving pinky tones, so I really do feel like this is one that I'm going to love more. And the reason why I wasn't as crazy about it before was I wasn't into these types of purple tones. They just weren't the kind that I like. I like more lavender, light, glittery, and I wasn't getting that from these, and overall, it just didn't appeal to me. But now, I think as time has gone on and my color preference differences have changed. I see myself using this one a lot more. Right now I'm wearing this as my crease shade, this as my outer corner shade, this shade all over my lid, and then I have a little bit of this shade right in the inner corner here. Oh, and I have this shade. It's kind of, I made a C basically around the inner half of my upper lash line and around here as well to add a fun pop. But yeah, for a while I fell off of this palette. I haven't used it much recently, but I think I'm gonna start using this more because I really enjoyed my time with it today. Number 13, we have a pre-made palette from Natasha Denona. This is the palette number 10. So this is still available. I think she's phased these out of her collection, but this is one of the few that are still available. and. I mean, I don't really recommend this because you can get all of these shades in one of her 28 pan palettes that is up higher in my rank. So that's why I don't reach for this one that often because I have the big 28 palette that these colors were in. But I did love this palette for a really long time before I invested in the full size palette. That's a lot more money. So for me, this was great at the time because it has such beautiful colors. But even when I look at this, it's such a beautiful pairing and I wouldn't think to pair these together if I had the full size palette for it. So sometimes I will grab for this just because I love the color story that's already made here and the formula is phenomenal. Number 12, this is one that also I think I might be on the unpopular side of, but I really love the Safari palette. I think it is an interesting mix of mattes. I think that the colors are beautiful. If you're wondering why my looks basically untouched, it's because it is. This was actually in my mom's collection for a while, so I recently purchased one on my own when it was on sale so I could have one stay in my room over here, but I really like the quality of these. Uh, the big issue that most people have or with colors up here. If you work slowly and carefully, I think you're able to get them to work, or at least they have worked for me so far. And this isn't a palette that I create full looks with, unless I am specifically going for a matte eye, which doesn't happen often. But I love grabbing in here because you get all types of different tones and a beautiful formula. Number 11, we have this gorgeous guy right here. I love how adventurous she's gotten with her color stories for these babies. So this is the mini gold palette and green is such a trendy color right now. This came out right at the correct time because it's a great way to have a green look without it being too green and in your face. I think the colors in here are unique and it really lays out a way for you to create a more green-based look without having to think too hard about it, especially if you're getting into experimenting with color. It's a beautiful formula and for me, it's ranking pretty high because I love the color story here. Ooh, you guys, we are getting into the top 10. So number 10, we are kicking it off with the Trio Chrome palette. Now, I don't know, like I just really like the mattes in here. I've said this before, the trio of the multi-chromes, which aren't really multi-chrome, it's more of a duo-chrome, are a little bit lackluster in my opinion. You, you can just get something much more jam-packed with color, shine, foil, the multi-chrome aspect with indie brands, and I feel like Natasha just didn't master that formula. That being said, there is a time and a place for a more wearable multi-chrome, I suppose. But it's the mattes here that really speak out to me and make me love this palette because Natasha does not have any colors like this in her line. And honestly, I don't think I have many colors like this in my collection. This is the most unique palette that I have in my collection. And for that reason, I have to give it to her. I think the formula is really nice, especially with those mattes. The color story, the colors that she put together are so well thought out. I love this palette. Number nine is my most used baby. This is the mini glam palette. Cool toned neutrals are my jam and this is my cool tone loves all in one palette so I think if you want to experiment with more cooler tones without actually being you know 
gray on your eye or purple. This is a great way to get into those tones at a pretty affordable price. These are like $25. The quality in here is really good. This is just everyday colors that I prefer to wear in a palette. Number eight, we have the beloved Biba palette. When this came out, nobody was really into it because it's kind of a blah palette, but then we realized how often we all used it. The formulation in here is so buttery smooth. It's so user-friendly and the colors just make sense. The the way that the palette lit is laid out it makes it super easy to create different looks and if you're a neutral wearer you need to add this to your collection i mean i'm not going to tell you what you need to do but if you're looking for an effortless way to apply your neutral shadows and you really do wear neutral shadows every day just make your experience so much better and easy and get a high quality palette like this, you can't do better. Number seven, I love this one. This is the bronze palette and I'm not a huge bronze makeup girl, but whenever I want a bronze look, this is the way to do it. It made me fall in love with the bronze look and myself as well. The formulation is in here is impeccable. My only one, I guess, kind of caveat with this is you don't get too much variety in looks. You know, a lot of the looks that you do are going to look the same but thank goodness the quality in here is so spectacular just know you're only going to really get a bronze look out of this palette but it's not going to let you down it's really beautiful the next palette that we have is the love palette now this is ranking so high based on the amount of times that i've used this palette this is one of my most used natasha denona palettes i love wearing pink and purple especially this year so this was the palette especially in the first half of 2020 that i used all the time i couldn't put it down. Now it's not a perfect palette. I will say that there are a little bit of inconsistencies in a few of the formulas, which I do think is unacceptable for the price, but I just love the color story so much that I can't put it down. I know so many of you guys think the same thing as well about this palette. It's just a great color story. I reach for it all the time. Number five, we have the 28 purple blue palette. If you want the best of the best from Natasha Denona, you really have to invest in one of their original purple blue palettes. And I thought this one was going to be my favorite for a while because I love wearing purple so much, but I didn't quite reach for it as much. But the colors are so beautiful. Every single color you swatch is going to knock you down on the floor. The shimmers, there's just so much detail in them, so much dimension. This is the best of the best of the best of the best of her formula. I get asked this all the time. Are her palettes different from the 28 pan formula? Nothing has really equated to this quality in my opinion. Natasha Dona has top of the line formula, not discrediting all of her other palettes because the formula on those are phenomenal as well, but there's something extra special. There's like a secret ingredient in this formula that just makes it better. I don't know. I love this color story. This palette's incredible and I'm really fearful that she is trying to slowly phase these out of her collection, which would be devastating because they are amazing. They are beautiful and I love this. Number four, you guys. This is going to surprise you because this was number one last year. It just wasn't a palette that I reached for a lot this year. This is the gold palette and I'm even struggling to put it at four because now I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh my gosh. It is such a beautiful palette. She really played with different dimensions and textures with this palette. It really was at the time that it came out so unique for her line. I was really thinking about with ranking what I wore the most, what I grabbed for the most. And this one, I slowed down on grabbing for. In the past couple of years, it's still beautiful. I still love it. It still holds a very special place in my heart. But as far as use, it just didn't get reached for. But I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's a great starter palette for it. Natasha Denona as well. I cannot believe this ended up slipping into number three. This is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I really love this when it first came out. I gave it a fabulous review, but I was kind of uneasy about it because I didn't really like the way that the palette was laid out. I personally prefer my palettes more monochromatically laid out, and this one was a bit sporadic for me. I just feel like, see, you have all these jumps of copper everywhere. To me, it didn't make sense. I know there's a way where you you know you put them like this like whatever yeah I know I just 
To me, it isn't aesthetically pleasing, but alas, this is one of my favorite palettes because you get 28 colors. It's half the amount of product as those big 28 palettes, so it's actually half the price as well. The value is amazing, the color story is amazing, and at the end of the day, I reached for this palette a ton. Okay, when I look at it, it's not as visually appealing to me as a lot of her other palettes, but it's just what I grabbed for a lot this year. And I do really recommend it just because it's such a great value and the formulas are really, really great if you like the colors. I do have to say, probably not my favorite color story, but I would love her to come out with more palettes like these in different color stories, but I still use these colors a lot, don't get me wrong. Alrighty. Number two, the 28 green brown palette. So this is the other 28 pan palette that I absolutely love. And as far as the colors that I was wearing a lot this year, green was really in style. So I actually found myself wearing this palette a lot. And I also really like this nude corner that you have down here. This row of these really rich emerald colors are absolutely stunning. So same exact thing that I said with the 28 purple blue palette and that the formulation in here is just a little bit extra special. This is the one that I reached for more over the purple blue. Blue. Phenomenal. Just a beautiful palette. Again, I'm really scared she's trying to get rid of those, so if you are interested in them, it's a lot of money to put down, but there are very special palettes in my collection. Alrighty, you guys, let's move on to number one. You guys have probably guessed it right now. You're like, the Morgan Glam Palette. So I've been talking about my love for neutral cool tones or cool tone neutrals. This fits the bill for me. It's not my number one used palette from Natasha Denona, surprisingly, just because of the time that it came out. I haven't been wearing makeup to wear makeup in COVID times. I wear makeup to review for you guys. So it hasn't been my most reached for, but I know when I start living an everyday normal life, this is a palette that I will use all the time. And and I love everything about this palette from the color to the quality to how easy it is to use to how the palette is laid out. It just makes sense to me and this isn't the number one palette that I would recommend to somebody because you have to like these colors. This is ranking in number one for me because I like the colors and the quality so everything about it is just a reason for me to grab for it. If you're a first time Natasha Denona owner, I would recommend the Metropolis palette just because of how great and the variety of colors you're getting. If you're really looking to splurge and just really get something special in your collection, I highly recommend the 28 palette. If you're a neutral wearer who just wants something nice, the Biba palette. And if you're looking for something unique but still wearable, I love the gold palette. So there's a lot of reasons that I would recommend certain palettes to you guys, but I hope this video helped at least narrow it down and help you out. That's why I make these videos because I want to help you guys make your purchase and decide what you want to spend your hard earned money on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I right, guys have a good one.